Boy, if there ain't no Yankees around, why don't we go get us an oysters? That sounds good. Where we gonna get them, man? Right, right down here in the water. Right down there. That sure be better than mountain oysters we've been eating. Let's go do it. And we're gonna burl that Chase, sack we can put them in. Chase none of them Yanks around. we get us a free moment. What would you do if there was a Yankee around? I'd come out there and I'd take that man boy and I'd, I'd light him up. <laughs> Whoa! Not to go my foot. <laughs> they don't need no help. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson that. He's in the wagon, Daddy. Oh, it's so good to see you, boys. Go get my baby. Go get Thomas Jefferson. It's been such a long time since I see him. I want to hug him and I want to kiss him. That's my baby boy. He's in the wagon, Daddy. Well, go get him, John Dine. Thank you, Daddy. The yellow people. That don't make any sense, John Dine. The yellow people's all over Wilmington, Daddy. You got it. Rufus, go get my boy. I want to see my baby boy. He's been gone so long. Go get my boy. You can't, Daddy. Daddy, he's dead. He's gone. What? He's dead, Daddy. We brought him home to bear him sat on him. Are you saying my boy's dead? Yes, sir, Daddy. My baby's dead. Yes, sir, he's gone. Dear John, I have moved back home. I'm tired of trying to stay away from other people. They look at me in mysterious ways when the cough comes. I have good news for you, my dear husband. My monthly nature of things have changed 
for several months since you were last here. I felt it might be the consumption that Dr. McKay says will move to other parts of my body. He says no, that I'm now carrying your baby. You will finally become a father, John D. Mr. McKay estimates my time to come due in September. He has told Charlotte that she should deliver in August and Martha is due in September. It appears that your trip home this fall was productive. I am anxious to receive some money as I know you're paid today. I owe the doctor for his visit. Love, Edith. Dear Isaac, it's just awful since you left. There is no one to help your daddy except we three women. He loses his temper with us regularly and once he cursed. He is worried nearly to death about you. I do not know if he will ever recover completely from losing your younger brother. Thomas Jefferson. I hope you are not suffering too much. We hear the army has a hard time getting enough to eat and that there is no coffee only chicory. It is that way in Aversboro too. Mr. Avery is not doing good. He is hurting in his chest about every day. He sits more than he walks anymore. We carry him food. Massey died soon after you left. I love you darling. Martha Jane. My dear Charlotte, by now surely you have received word that I am stricken with smallpox. I know not whether I shall live through the phase that I have just entered into. I do not fear death. Just today I reaffirm my belief in Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead. I lie not when I tell you that I am miserable. If I do not make it through the next two weeks, be sure and tell my children that their daddy loves them and make sure of their salvation before you pass so that they can come to worship God in heaven at their last day. If you survive this war, please tell Reuben that I loved him, even though I have never seen him. Tell my daddy that I wish I were here to help him at his day of passing. Tell him that I have always been proud of my father. Maybe I will rise from my bed soon and be furloughed to your side. I love you, Charlotte. I always have. Rufus. Isaac's gone. Mr. Abram? Dear Mr. Avra, we buried cousin Lucian Avery yesterday. We put him decently away under a wild cherry tree on a hilltop. 